And I'm your favorite magic channel, favorite magic channel. Best believe that the professor go bananas for my deck text. I come correct like a porn star slicing up all these other suckers with my sword march. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev. From SBMTG, we like magic. And you know what? It's been a fun couple of weeks. We've done a bunch of these, like, off-the-wall, mid-rangey combo-y decks lately. And these decks have been really cool. But I really wanted to just kind of get back to basics and swing some dudes sideways. So with that in mind, here's budget red-white aggro for you. And before we really get into it here, I just want to briefly, at the beginning, talk about why I chose red-white over other stuff. Honestly, I just think that the mono-red aggro deck and even the red-black aggro deck are just kind of everywhere. You can find coverage of those decks pretty much anywhere you want. Uh, just, just pick your Magic the Gathering site. You'll find article after article about mono-red and red-black aggro. But there's so much that you can do with red-white aggro on a budget even in this format and like nobody's talking about it. So I wanted to take 15-20 minutes to discuss some aspects of red-white aggro because there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in this color combination. But with the explanation out of the way, let's talk about some good old-fashioned Smash Mouth magic. First of all, can't have an aggro deck without creatures, so we should probably bring those up first, starting with the obvious four copies of Bomac Courier. This is probably still King of the One Drops in Standard. Well, somehow, after like more than a year of this being a playset in you know, Mono Red Aggro and some Mardu Vehicles list, but there's still a perception among some people in the player base that this card is bad. Every time I talk about Bomac Courier, there's a few people in the comments, like multiple people, who are like, Bomac Courier is terrible. I don't know where you're getting that idea. It shows up in some really powerful decks um, already, but just think about it. Ask yourself the question, what's like the worst part about playing an aggro deck? Well, traditionally, typically at least, it's that you run out of cards on like turn four or five and you're in top deck mode for the rest of the game. And the average power level of any individual card in your deck is lower than average. Uh, for the most part, because we try to keep the curve really low, meaning that you're going to draw a bunch of one and two drops when you go to top deck. So your average top decks aren't as good as a mid-range or control deck either. So that's a major problem for aggro. But having a card like Bomac Courier that gives you like a one, two, or sometimes even three card refill in the late game is exactly what aggro wants. You know, there's a lot of mid-range and control decks that count on you running out of creatures around the same time they run out of cards that can remove your creatures. So this can just completely foil that entire plan. It's super important, and you get in a bunch of early damage. But my carrier is amazing. Now, we need a bunch of one drops so we can get on board super early. So, I'm also going to play four copies of Fanatical Firebrand, a card I really, really like. This gives us eight hasty one drops. Really nice. You know, if we get on board turn one, we are swinging in. <laughs> We're taking points off their life total 5% of their life total <laughs> on turn one. That's something. Um, but Fat Fanatical Firebrand has been like slowly working its way into mono red aggro decks as a one, sometimes even a one of or a two of. Um, and as time goes on, I think people will more and more realize how good this card actually is. First of all, there's a bunch of X1s in this format that see a bunch of play. You know, we just talked about how much play Beaumont Courier sees. There's Earthshaker Kenra, there's Glint Siphoner's a really important one, Champion of Wits, and there's more. You just, you know, one toughness creatures this can take out, and few of them are, um, you know, higher than it on the curve, which is always a nice trade to be able to make. But this is also just like Reach. That's, that's really important in an aggro deck where every deck counts, you know. If you can get in a couple of points of early damage on the play with this thing, which is a breeze, it's very easy to do, again. Um, and then sack it later for a point of damage, that's a lightning bolt. So that's, that's not terrible at all. One mana, three damage. And it can mess up combat math and just kind of sit back and mess up combat math, make your opponent think twice about blocks. So there's just a lot of really cool stuff about this card. For one mana, you can do a lot worse. A lot of versatility here. Speaking of Ken, here he is right here. I just talked about Euro Shaker Ken. This is just a really, 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 really good card. This is a perfect standard two drop. And I'm kind of surprised this doesn't see more modern play. Uh, honestly, it's just, it's a really fantastic two drop. It's stacked with stats, you know. Two mana, two power. Haste is crazy. Creature can't block is crazy. When it enters the battlefield, and it eternalizes. This just does oh, literally everything. The perfect aggro two drop. So we're going to play all four copies. And it's not even like super expensive. You'd be impressed to see the prices of some of these mono red aggro cards. You know, Bumat Courier, lots of play. It's only like a buck. Same thing with this. It's just a little above a dollar, like a dollar twenty-five. And it's seriously one of the best cards in the format. So we'll play a full play set. Just Earthshaker does it all. We're also going to play two copies of Kari Zev in the deck. She's legendary, and we got some other two drops I want to get to, especially since we can play white. So, got some other two drops I want to shove in there, but I'll at least play the two copies of Kari Zev. She's still really awesome. <laughs> it's just everything to be said about Kari Zev has already been said. She's not, she hasn't lost a step 
in this format either. You know, she's a decent board presence by herself. In a way, she represents a two mana, three power creature, which is always good. You know, some of her has menace and first strike. There's just so many awesome things. This is another perfect standard to drop. You know, just kind of does a buttload of stuff and has a decent power to toughness for, you know, its casting costs. It's just, this is a really pushed card. And again, Karizev has not lost anything to time. So still a ridiculous two drop. It's funny that with like Earthshaker and Karizev, there's not a whole lot of tech to talk about because they're so, they're such like proactive cards, you know, they, they force a response, you know, they're not really worried about interacting with anything. It's just like, they are stacked, ridiculous, obviously good two drops that force a response. So there doesn't even really have to be tech involved <laughs> with the two of them. They're just so obviously ridiculous aggro cards. And we're going to play some number of them. But since we have access to white, I should talk about some white cards, because we haven't hit one yet. But a card that I'm really interested in playing is Adorned Pouncer, which I'll play a three of. Full disclosure, real talk, this is like actually one of my favorite cards in Standard right now. I just don't really get to play with it too often, so <laughs> we're making a red-white aggro deck. I really wanted to play Adorned Pouncer, and I'm not looking back either. And by the way, you know, a second ago I was talking about how there are a bunch of like relevant X1s in the early turns right now. Well, Adorned Pouncer, just eat those right up, glide right through, hit the opponent for one afterwards. Pretty sweet. And one more thing, actually. I've already shown you Earthshaker Kenra. It can keep a creature from blocking on the opponent's side when it enters the battlefield. Well, abilities like that work really well alongside Double Strike. That's a nice interaction. And we've got way more cards in the deck than just Earthshaker that can do that. It works really well with Adorn Pouncer, too. But I wanted to leave room in the deck for two copies of Relentless Raptor. I don't want to go all the way and play a bunch of copies of this. At least that's not the conventional wisdom right now. But honestly, I have nothing but loved this card since the moment I saw it. You know, maybe, maybe it's not as good as I want it to be. But I just can't help thinking that it's a better looking Watch Wolf. I love, I love Watch Wolf. You know, 2 mana 3-3 three, three is always really powerful. And in a deck like this, we're attacking every turn anyway. That's essentially reminder text. We don't, we don't care about that. And it has Vigilance. That's super sweet to brick wall other aggro decks in the early game while making sure we can still get swings in. That's just There's a lot of really good things about Relentless Raptor. I think it's worth at least a two of. And to finish the creatures off here, we're just going to play four copies of Oncrop Crasher. Well, in case you haven't been counting, I'll count for you. This is our 16th haste creature. There's a bunch of hasty dudes in the deck. The acceleration is real. We're really putting the foot down here. This is a fast deck. Lots and lots of haste guys. But this also, by the way, is another thing that keeps a creature from blocking, which is super awesome in this deck. Just discussed that with the Dorn Pouncer, but getting a couple of dudes like Crasher or Kenra in your opening hand is always a great way to make sure you get some guaranteed damage in the early game. And there's the old one too. You know, just like Earthshaker turn two, and then Oncrop Crasher turn three. And usually Hazaret would be sort of the finishing, like, up uppercut, the old Shoryuken at the end of that. But for purposes of saving money, for, for the budget, we're not playing Hazarets in this deck. But this is still a fine curve topper in an aggro deck, and that allows us to play fewer lands, something I'm totally comfortable with. It turns out we're actually playing a fair amount of spells in our aggro deck, and some of them won't surprise you. So I'll go ahead and show you the four copies of Shock and the four copies of Lightning Strike, because you know they're going to be here. One could argue that Shock is actually, like, better than ever. You know, there's a lot of really good targets for Shock right now. Same goes for Lightning Strike. Ditto Lightning Strike. But there's also the fact that against control decks, which are plentiful in the format, you're not, like, these aren't dead cards in your hand, essentially. You know, they don't have to kill a creature. They can always hit your opponent straight to the dome, which is very, very important <laughs> to be able to do. They're essentially just reach. You know, even if you go Bomat turn one, you know, Earthshaker can return two, Oncrap Crasher turn three. Even if you got three with all of them on every combat step, that's still only half your opponent's life total. So <laughs> there's got to be some reach, and these burn spells really help with that. I just wanted to get that out of the way so we can start talking about the spicy stuff that I included here, the, the, the most disagreeable stuff, in other words, but I think the spiciest stuff, starting with the three copies of Cartouche of Zeal. Now, for one mana, this thing is a steal. It does so much. You know, a boost to a creature is already pretty relevant, but even the haste and the ability to, you know, keep a creature from blocking, although they're redundant, they're still, like, the good kind of redundancy. Sure, we've got a lot of haste creatures in this deck. I'll give you that much. So it's not going to be effective for that reason on everything. But the creatures that don't have haste, Cartouche is so awesome on. You know, <laughs> turn three, you can go Adorned Pouncer, Cartouche, keep that guy from blocking, get in for at least four with Adorned Pouncer. That's pretty nice. On turn three, you can also go like Relentless Raptor, Cartouche, keep that guy from blocking, get in for four. That's also nice. So some really good turn three and even beyond stuff you can do with Cartouche. And there are going to be times where you can double up 
you know, that guy can't block effects, you know, turn four, crasher, cartouche, you know, both your dudes can't block. So that can be really, really good too. And sometimes give you that extra push you need to get in for the win. You know, this is another form in a way of reach, not quite like burn is or anything, not quite like fanatical firebrand, but being able to double up on these, you can't block effects is actually super important on turns three and four, which are key turns for an aggro deck. But I've also included two copies of Built to Smash. This is low-key, another one of my favorite cards, actually. And you so rarely see it, at least anymore. But, and I see the reasons why. I know there are arguments against Built to Smash. But to me, this is as close as it gets to, like, giant growth in standard. And that's, that's a good rate. You know, one mana for a plus three, plus three boost. I know the creature has to be attacking. I know that it works best on artifact creatures. So it's really good on Bowmat Courier. But even if you're not getting the full, you know, value out of it, one mana for plus three, plus three to an attacker is amazing in a deck where you're going to be attacking every turn anyway, you know. And if your opponent's playing red removal, a lot of the times they're going to wait till you swing in anyway. They, the rule is wait till the last second to play removal for the most part. So they're going to usually hit the creature while it's attacking anyway. So you can just put the creature above lightning strike. Uh, for one mana with a build to smash. That's the oldest trick in the book, you know? Lightning bolt your guy, giant growth my guy. Oop, doop. Um, and we can do that in standard right now. But a lot of the times, this is just a great instant speed, you know, uh, way that they almost never see coming. Almost no one accounts for built to smash. Um, that you can play on an unblocked creature. Like, let's say, again, they let in Adorned Pouncer. Well, at instant speed, you can hit for a lot. You can hit for at least eight at instant speed. And if you have a 4-4 four, four Adorned Pouncer, you, sir, are getting in for 14 damage. So, that's, I mean, that's pretty sweet, too. But this even works great on 1-1s one that randomly happen to get in. Suddenly, you're hitting for four, and your opponent did not account for that. So, I still love Build to Smash. I'll pimp it all day. I'll talk it up all day. I like Build to Smash a lot, and I think it's worth playing. But the last card before we get to the lands is one of the most interesting cards in the deck, and it's sort of a land. We're going to play two copies of Path of Metal. Well, this card is, now that you think about it, now that you see it, it's pretty obvious, one of the reasons that the creature base is constructed the way that it is. All of our creatures have one of these abilities, whether it's haste or double strike, vigilance even with a relentless raptor, yada yada. So we don't run the risk of like killing any of our creatures with Path of Metal, which by the way is the whole reason, commenter in the, in the comments section, that I didn't play Sky March or Aspirate. I also don't want to be forced to get white mana on turn one if, if I don't have to, so there's another reason, but Sky Marcher might be in the deck if not not for Path of Metal, but I think it's worth it because this thing is ridiculous reach in the late game if you get it turned over. It sort of takes the place of Ramanap Ruins, in my mind, <laughs> at least, you know, except for with Ruins, um, unless you had multiple deserts out, you couldn't get extra damage every turn. But with this, you get extra damage every turn. So a lot of end games will come down to you just like taking what creatures you have left, chump blocking with them so you can get, you know, three turns out of a flipped over path and hit them for two with a Metzali, like three turns in a row. Get that final last bit of juice you need to finish the game. But here's our mana base. We're playing 22 lands in this deck, and I think you could make an argument for 21, or if you're crazy, maybe 20 lands in this deck. But I really wanted that last white source, that third planes. You know, we need white mana on turn two, somewhat reliably for our two drops in this deck. And not only that, we want to have some ghost of a chance of eternalizing a Dorn Pouncer before it gets to turn nine so you know we gotta play some white sources in this deck so i wanted that one extra one so we made it up to 22 lands here but you know we we very very rarely flood out you don't have to worry about it too much with only 22 lands it'll make sure you hit that third drop as consistently as possible here's our sideboard right here and we could build a pretty good cheap sideboard for a red white deck you know we've got chandra's defeat that's an all-star in sideboards we'll definitely play that just you know, we, can't, we may not be able to afford Chandra, but we can kill Chandra for a quarter and one mana. So we'll do that. We're also going to uh, finish off the playset of Built to Smash. Although I will say, I probably should have said this during the me actually covering Built to Smash, but you could, matter of personal preference here, play Invigorated Rampage if you wanted to do that. But Built to Smash is a little bit better at saving creatures that would otherwise die in combat. And I think it's really important in this deck. So I will be Built to Smash, but Invigorated Rampage is really great, especially with Adorned Pouncer. So you could play that if you wanted to. You also see the Kari Zez expertise from when we come up against other aggro decks. It's actually a really, really powerful card. Um, and sometimes all you need is that extra attack step with one of their dudes and a free spell. Um, and that'll really put you over the top in terms of tempo. Um, so I really like Kari Zev's expertise. You're not always going to find three cards you want to cut from your main deck to include this in some matchups. But usually against aggro, at least two copies of expertise will go in. This is a fantastic card on turn three. And finally, Ixalan's Binding. This is a little heavy duty. It's a four drop. 
Um, but it's also one of the cheapest ways that we can protect against the best cards in the entire format. You know, you could play Cast Out if you wanted to, and even uh, Thopter Arrest <laughs> is an option that I have seen some decks play sparingly, yes, uh, not very often, but I have seen lists that play Thopter Arrest because it's only three mana. You know, that's, that's, that's very cheap in comparison to four mana. Um, so I could see doing that, but for my money, Ixalan's Binding is the best of the bunch. Before I get to the power rankings, I just want to discuss some upgrades, some side grades, some possible cards you could play, just real quick here. As far as big upgrades, though, I'd say you could probably just take this deck and make it mono-red. You, know, you could take out a Dorn Pouncer, but if you wanted, you could leave in Path of Metal, or maybe a couple copies of Relentless Raptor. You could leave in some things. It doesn't have to be straight red, but either way, Hazaret goes in the deck. We just don't have all the money. Like, a copy of Hazaret is more than half of what this deck costs. So we just we can't afford her. She's crazy. One of the best creatures in standard, but she's just a little out of control. Same thing with Chandra. You know, this is another crazy red four drop that costs more than half the deck to buy a copy of. So if you got them, smoke them, you know. But if not, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy Chandra's for this deck particularly. Same thing with Rekindling Phoenix. I mean, there's red four drops all day that are just, you know, $20, $30 that we can't afford. But don't worry, the deck still produces results. It's really, really fast. But if you've got the money or the cards already, these go in pretty obviously. But there are some light upgrades to this deck. If you don't want to spend a bunch of money, but you're interested in some cards that are maybe just slightly out of budget or didn't quite fit into the deck, there's Oketra. I think this is a fine 4-drop. If you're looking for a 4-drop and you don't want to spend $20, $30, Oketra is a pretty good 4-drop in this deck. Another double strike creature for your built to smash and your card tears. That's pretty cool. Um, and obviously, we're swinging with enough creatures to make Oketra swing, too. So this is not bad. Oketra would not be a bad choice, and she's only like 3 bucks right now. Another one is Soul Scar Mage. I think that Soul Scar Mage is like 250 right now. Only slightly out of our budget, but it is a one drop you want to consider, especially with 15 spells in the deck. You'll get a lot of prowess triggers, so that's nice. And with all the burn, obviously, too, Soul Scar is nice. And here are your power rankings. A final score of 62 points. It's pretty good for a $45 deck. This thing is under 50 bucks right now. And I think it proves you don't have to be super rich to play Magic. You can pick up some packs with this at FNM. Um, definitely. It's just super fast. It's trim. You know, it doesn't feel like it has to play these 20 and $30 four drop, um, red cards that everyone feels like you have to play in this format. And it's faster for it. Again, the deck is relatively trim compared to other quote unquote aggro decks in this format. We play fewer lands. Our curve is lower, you know, and we're faster for it. Um, I'm saying you can win some packs with this and we've got some good in game options for a budget aggro deck. You know, we've got the old, the traditional aggro plan of like hit them hard and fast in the early game, burn their face off in the mid and late game. We can do that. We still have access to that. But we've got the old, you know, double up on you can't block effects, get in with more guys than we have business getting in with. And then we have, you know, Path of Metal. Once we flip over into Mitsali, just a few turns, you know, hitting them to the face. Uh, is, is going to end the game. That's really good reach too, you know? And we can even surprise them with like a Dorm Pouncer built to smash. Or even just like, you know, Earthshaker Kenra built to smash can get in five they didn't expect. So we can end the game in a hurry with this thing. We've got a lot of like lightning speed at the beginning. And then again, some decent in-game options for an aggro deck. So I hope you give this thing a shot. And if you're interested in checking out the list or ordering the list for that matter, you can, as always, hit the first link in the description. Go over to my buddies at TCG Playa. Right there, just hit the first link and that'll take you to the deck list. And they're the cheapest place you can get this list online right now. It's a little under 50 bucks. It's like 45, 46 right now. And if you're interested in getting like lightly played cards and stuff, you can whittle this down to like 35 bucks. So click the link in the description. They like it when you do that. It actually helps the channel if you just click the link. So help me out by doing that and help me out by hitting the like button. That's like the most low effort thing you can do. Just slam the thing. Just do it. Um, so do that. Sub if you're new. You know, we got many, many, many more deck techs. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure you get the content. Sub, hit the bell for the notifications. Follow me on Twitter at SBMTGDev for witticisms and also another way of knowing when we put out content if you want to be in the know. And if you really want to because you like my face, you can throw me a dollar a month, a whole dollar a month on Patreon. You might not even notice. But even if that is a lot of money for you, some people it is. I me <laughs> a dollar's a lot of money for it so if that is a lot of money for you i'll compensate you i'll let you know what decks we're doing the day before we do them so even more information i'm all about information i want you to be informed so do all that stuff i'll leave a link to patreon down there in the description if you're interested
But with that, I'm officially tapped out. That's all I got for this one, but hit me down there in the comments section. Let me know how you felt about it. Let me know what you'd add to it, or take away from it for that matter. I'm just, I like talking to you. So I like seeing what you have to say. I read the comments. Trust me, I read the comments. So comment to me down there. Let me know how you felt about it, and I'll catch you cats later. I'm Deb from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Couldn't do it without you. Spread love and be kind.